Is Hawkeye teasing the arrival of a major Marvel villain? Ho, 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 guy, Marvel fans! After tripping the light trip to Fantastic during Thanksgiving, we've emerged on the other side ready to embrace the Christmas spirit oozing from every pore of Hawkeye's being. As in Hawkeye the show, not Clint Barton the man. I hope he doesn't ooze anything at all during the course of this entire series, but I digress. The first two episodes of Hawkeye debuted last Wednesday and introduced us to Kate Bishop, Lucky the Pizza Dog, LARPing Firefighters, the Tracksuit Mafia, and a ton of other characters that will turn Clint Barton's life upside down as he tries desperately to make it home for the holidays. Now, with villains like the Tracksuit Mafia, Clown, and potentially Echo waiting in the wings to make Clint and Kate's lives a living hell, our heroes have their hands full. And that's to say nothing of solving the mystery of Armand Duquesne III's murder, or where I can get my hands on some monogrammed butterscotch. I want him. But a new theory floating around suggests that, in addition to a bevy of trick arrows, Hawkeye might have another surprise for us in the form of a major Marvel villain, the Kingpin. Now, we're going to break down this theory and what it means for both the MCU and the Marvel multiverse in just a moment, but in order to do so, we need to spoil what happens in the first two episodes of Hawkeye. So if you haven't seen these yet, leave now before you find yourself way in over your head. All right, let's get into it, shall we? So the idea that Kingpin will appear in the Hawkeye series has been bandied about for what feels like months at this point. Back in September, we shared a theory based on comic book clues and fans feverishly overanalyzing the tweets of Vincent D'Onofrio, who played the most iconic live-action version of the character on Netflix's Daredevil series. Given the advent of the Marvel multiverse, characters like J. Jonah Jameson apparently being Nexus beings, and rumors of Charlie Cox reprising his role as Daredevil in Spider-Man No Way Home, it's easy to believe that Kevin Feige and company might want to bring back a major Marvel villain like Kingpin as well. This theory, which we first spotted via Screen Rant, revolves around a major piece of property in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Avengers Tower, which coincidentally played a major role in Hawkeye's first episode. Of course, back then in 2012, it was still Stark Tower, but this massive New York City skyscraper served as the Avengers' home away from home until they migrated to a much larger compound in upstate New York. During the events of Spider-Man Far From Home, we learned that Tony Stark had actually sold Avengers Tower to an undisclosed buyer, and it was undergoing extensive renovations. A construction sign in Spider-Man Far From Home had many people thinking that Avengers Tower could become the MCU's version of the Baxter Building, which is the home base of the Fantastic Four, who we know are going to join the MCU eventually in a film directed by Spider-Man No Way Home's John Watts. Loki showed us another version of Avengers Tower that had been purchased by Kang the Conqueror shell company, Kang Enterprises, but that isn't what Hawkeye's setting up for us despite the appearance of a literal Kang watch in episode one. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch our episode breakdown and come back because I will wait. Now, in terms of villains, it's tempting to suggest that this remodeled Avengers Tower could be the future home of Oscorp, building off the impending arrival of Norman Osborn in the MCU in Spider-Man No Way Home. This could also be a fascinating way to pay off the Dark Avengers and Dark Reign storylines that are being seeded in shows like Falcon and the Winter Soldier and movies like Black Widow as we see Countess Valentina Allegra de Fontaine recruiting more murdery versions of Earth's Mightiest Heroes for some sort of shadowy super team. But with all of that said, the version of Norman Osborn we're getting in No Way Home seems a little too far gone to focus on the business of putting together his own version of the Avengers or the Thunderbolts. Rather, this theory puts forth an option that makes sense both for Hawkeye and the larger trajectory of the MCU, and that is Kingpin. As obscenely wealthy as he is dedicated to crime, Kingpin's often portrayed in the comics as having a massive base of operations called Fisk Towers. Serving as a public-facing front company to mask his illegal activities, this skyscraper is as important to Wilson Fisk's image as his signature white suit, especially for someone who wants to run New York's criminal underworld like it's a business. And speaking of New York's criminal underworld, while we've seen some glimpses of its shadier figures at that underground auction in episode one, so far the most organized of these criminals are the tracksuit mafia, who seemingly have one brain cell shared between a lot of them. Oh, bro. Come on, bro. But oh, he's, he's criticizing. Okay. And considering that Clint Barton cut a swath through the global criminal underworld, and New York's in particular, during his time as Ronan in the five years between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, it makes perfect sense that someone would fill that power vacuum, someone like Kane. Pin. And as Hawkeye producer Trin Tran confirmed to Nerdist in a recent interview, Hawkeye takes place roughly one year after the events of Avengers Endgame, which is plenty of time for someone like Kingpin to have marshaled his forces and establish himself as the new de facto leader of New York's criminal underbelly. But what proof is there that Kingpin actually exists in the world of Hawkeye? Well, first, let's look at the comics. 
Anyone who watched the first two episodes of Hawkeye can tell you that we haven't met the big bad yet. I'm convinced. And considering how deeply this series pulls from the Matt Fraction and David Aha comics, the idea that Kingpin might be waiting in the wing seems like it could actually happen. Kingpin first appears in issue two of the Hawkeye comics this series is based on, a storyline called The Vagabond Code. It follows Clint Barton and Kate Bishop infiltrating a black tie gala at the opening of a new hotel. And as it turns out, there's a metric ton of mega rich criminals in the audience, and the performers there use advanced hypnosis to put everyone into a trance so they can rob them blind. One thing leads to another, and Clint and Kate wind up robbing the bad guys who are robbing the bad guys, which puts both of them squarely in the crosshairs of a villainous cabal of New York City's crime bosses, including Kingpin himself. And considering trailers have showcased Clint and Kate dressed to the nines and running for their lives at some sort of fancy function, it stands to reason we could see this play out in the show as well. After running afoul of Kingpin and the tracksuit mafia, Kingpin and company hired the assassin known as Clown to take out Clint Barton once and for all. Better known as Kazi, Clown is played on Hawkeye by Fra Fee, and we've seen him cross paths with both Kate and Clint in the first two episodes of the show. Now, in the comics, he actually winds up stabbing Hawkeye in the ears with his own arrows, which can't be good for Clint's already damaged hearing. And there's another major Kingpin connection in the form of Maya Lopez, the anti-hero assassin better known as Echo. Played by Alakwa Cox, we caught a glimpse of her at the end of episode two, ominously standing in front of a wall of speakers, ready to apply some pressure to a newly captured Kate and Clint. Born deaf, Echo possesses the ability of photographic reflexes. Similar to Taskmaster in Black Widow, she can perfectly mimic any physical movement she sees. Now, in the comics, she was also the daughter of a mob enforcer working for Kingpin. But after having her dad secretly murdered, Kingpin took Echo in and gave her the best education that money could buy. He fostered her talents both as a concert pianist and a martial artist, transforming her into a verified killing machine to unleash on Daredevil. While they'll likely explore more of Echo's backstory on her forthcoming Disney Plus series, introducing Kingpin as her benefactor and secret betrayer on this show would make a ton of sense both for the source material and to give us a terrific villain for more of these street level characters that Marvel's pushing to the forefront in phase four and beyond. And if Kingpin is indeed the new owner of Avengers Tower, it makes sense why he would send goons like the tracksuit mafia to recover items like that mysterious watch that was up for auction in episode one. Considering what someone like Tony Stark could do with a pair of seemingly innocuous glasses in Spider-Man Far From Home, it stands to reason that this watch could be the key to unlocking some part of Tony Stark's legacy, some part that remained hidden in Avengers Tower unbeknownst even to the likes of Happy Hogan or Pepper Potts. Perhaps this piece of Stark tech unlocked by the wristwatch could also be what leads to the events of Armor Wars or another Disney Plus series down the line. Or maybe Kingpin's outfit just won't be complete without a nice accessory to complement his suit. Only time will tell. What we do know is that Hawkeye has already teased Kingpin in this show with an extremely subtle Easter egg in the very first episode. Eagle-eyed viewers likely noticed the location of the charity gala and the black market auction in Hawkeye episode one seemed a little bit familiar, the Presidential Hotel. That was also the last place we saw Kingpin in the Marvel Netflix universe during season three of Daredevil. After running afoul of the Albanian mob, Wilson Fisk turned FBI informant and orchestrated an attack on himself in prison so he could get relocated to somewhere swankier, namely the penthouse of the Presidential Hotel. As Kingpin is wont to do, he slowly manipulated the FBI agents around him, accruing more and more power, and began using the hotel as his base of operations until his eventual defeat at Daredevil's hands in the series finale. And while that series ended with Fisk back in police custody and the Marvel Netflix series featured occasional connections to the larger MCU, their canonicity is questionable at best. Because as we've seen this new era of Marvel Studios-led TV shows, they're picking and choosing which elements of past Marvel TV shows they want to incorporate and canonize. So essentially, that means that characters like Daredevil, Kingpin, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, as they appeared in the Netflix shows, they're a bit like Schrodinger's cat. They're both canon and apocryphal until Kevin Feige company weigh in one way or the other. So for now, it's just a cool Easter egg, but with rumors swirling about Kingpin arriving towards the end of the season and his prominent place in the comic book lore of both the Hawkeye comics and Echo's backstory, this theory seems more plausible than others we've seen thus far. And you'd better believe we're going to be going over Hawkeye episode three with a fine toothed comb to look for clues when it drops on Wednesday. In the meantime though, folks, tell us what do you think of this theory? Do you think Kingpin will make an appearance in Hawkeye? And who do you think actually bought Avengers Tower? Uh, fantastic. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.